we've repaired it? I think so. Looks like we did. Okay, can you try to run something on it? Should I just press go and let yeah. see if it? Okay, here we go. Okay, here it goes. That was oh, it's running. Yeah, we got oh, it. On, on, its, on its own memory? Yeah, on its own memory. That's okay. great. So, yeah! Yes. Yes. And we have a special visitor right. today for a special delivery. This is Frank Krasno from, from Applied Science, Science right? right. Yeah. And, and oh, show, show the disky again, show, show it. There we go. And well, this thing has been a heroic build. A while ago, I had asked Ben if he could do an electroluminescent display for us, true to the original disky panel. We sent him the original NASA engineering file for the display. Due to the extreme difficulty, he did not commit to it. But six months later, out of the blue, this extraordinary video came up on his channel. He had spent six months of work doing it. And we saw it in the flesh for the first time at the After Maker Faire party back in May. It was just sensational. There is something about the electroluminescent display that the modern LED just does not capture. And this is repro, right? Uh, no, this is this is all homemade by Carl. <laughs> really? I'm yeah. kidding. I call it a substitute because it's not an exact replica. But Fair enough. Carl yes. is 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 our props yeah. extraordinaire. Ah. So I'm giving Ben a little tour of the collection here. They work, they, they oh, yeah. print it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little. <laughs> <laughs> so the little holes of goodness. Okay, I can dim the lights a little bit. All right, we have EL displays. Okay. So this is like its demo code where it just runs sort of random data. And when it switches over to the real thing, when it feels data sent to it? Yeah, exactly. Let me come in. Okay. Power coming up. It's up. Hey, it, uh, it's displaying something reasonable looking. Yeah. Well, that's pretty surprising. Whoa. It should be all blank right now. 27? Uh, it should be 88. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Should these be like mirroring each other? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're making progress. And minuses. After a little bit of disky open heart surgery, everything agrees. I've got to put the disky back together now. So now that we have repaired our AGC, of course, we want to try to do a moon landing with it. And uh, for that, we need to make it think it's attached to a real lamb or to enough of it so that it can land. Uh, so we know to progress through P63, we needed a few switches that's uh, easy to do, we caught them in the simulation. Uh, but of course, as soon as we ignite the engine, is not f if it's not feeling that the engine is pushing, it goes into an engine thrust air. The primary way the AGC feels that it's attached to a LEM is through the IMU, the uh, inertial uh, platform. And the IMU has two things. It has gyros and you can see my previous video in the gyro I actually have a real one uh, it turns out that it's not too unhappy if it doesn't get a real signal about the gyro we can still do a landing but it gets really angry if it doesn't get the acceleration sensing and that's done by the PIPA the pulse integrating pendulum accelerometer uh, and we need to replicate that before we can do a landing. So the PIPA is slightly smaller than the gyro and they were, as there were three gyros in the IMU, there are also three PIPA, so three accelerometers. And it looks like this. So you can, you can see the resemblance with the gyro that looks like that. 
And actually there is a lot of things that are similar. The gyro is a beryllium sphere with a gyro in it in a magnetic suspension and on one side there is a position sensor and the, on the other side there is a little motor. Well, uh, let's, let's imagine this, this is what would be inside in IREC, so except so a gyro that moves around and it's beryllium sphere, use your imagination. The beryllium sphere, of course. And then a position sensor, this one actually has one position sensor, it has a position sensor right here, but it doesn't have a motor. So imagine the same thing. Well, a pipa is, is uh, an, a, works under some of the similar things. It has also magnetic suspension, a position sensor and a motor, but in and a beryllium uh, sphere, at least a beryllium cylinder, but instead of having a gyro, uh, the cylinder is just unbalanced and they make it vibrate like this. So imagine a little thing that's vibrating, it's a pendulum. And it doesn't vibrate on its own, it gets the uh, uh, vibration from pulses from the motor side of the thing. And they measure how much it moves and they make it vibrate one degree in a servo loop. So they give it a few pulses to go this way, a few pulses to go that way, at least three of each, and it vibrates. And what happens is that uh, since this is a pendulum, it's unbalanced. When there is some acceleration along the sensing axis, uh, which would be this way, input axis, it takes more pulses to balance it in one way than the other. Uh, and so they count the number of pulses in excess of the uh, pulses that they need at rest, which is three pulses one way, three pulses the other way, and figure out the acceleration. And it's amazingly good. It, uh, the spec for the accelerometer is plus minus 16 Gs and 100 parts per million uh, in precision. So one pulse is one centimeter per second. So it's called an integrating pendulum accelerometer because it gives you directly delta V. So the amount of pulses per second is proportional to the delta V that the accelerometer is experiencing. So unfortunately, I don't have a real pipa. Uh, there was one on sale and I didn't go for it. I didn't know I would have you know, use, use, I would have needed one. But uh, for the purpose of what we want to do, we can make a Porzman replica. It's over here and it's made with an Arduino platform. I, I use the Atmel chip in it. I don't really use the fact that it's an Arduino. And you can see that I am doing plenty of pulses. So here's my uh, uh, PIPA bench test. Uh, and the first thing I need, I need to simulate what it gets from the AGC. This AGC actually interrogates the pipa and it sends it a string of very short pulses, uh, uh, three microsecond pulses. So that's my HP pulser here. It comes down here and over here I have a little circuit. So I reproduce exactly what comes out of the AGC with a similar transformer and a similar uh, circuit that's similar to what's inside the AGC to go from the uh, uh, RTLIC world to the analog world. And here I receive it. I have the inverse circuit on, on this uh, little uh, add-on on top of my Ar Arduino uh, that transforms it back to a 5 volt signal. And this is what we get. Here are my pipa pulses. On the bottom I have the signals I get from the AGC. And on the top, I have the, 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 the pseudo pipa pulses I'm simulating. It's uh, generating three pulses to go one way and three pulses to go the other way and should be oscillating in a stable arrangement. So unless the AGC is receiving its three pulses on the negative and then the positive counting channel, it gets really annoyed. Uh, so that's enough to uh, make it go out of error and I have to do that 
on three channels. So they have X, Y, Z and each one has a channel for plus pulses and a channel for minus pulses. Now on my pipa, I have also put uh, th three, actually I have four but one that's used. I have three potentiometers here I can turn for X, Y and Z and give it more or less acceleration. And I have this great GUI over here that tell me my X, Y and Z so I can give it more or less centimeters per second on X for example. And let's see what it does on the pulses. So right now it's at zero and that's the X axis. And let's give it a little bit of positive acceleration. So I actually followed what they did in the test equipment. I give it the pulses all, all at once instead of spreading them. So every second or half second, I, I give them all the, the pulses since the AGC calculates every two seconds, it really doesn't matter. The AGC actually counts the pulses. Uh, it doesn't count the three first ones, obviously, because they are there when nothing happens. And this just increments the counter. And this is how most of the uh, digital I.O. is done in the AGC is just directly, so the input of this is directly wired to a counter. Uh, the counter has two inputs, a plus and a minus. Uh, let's see if I can get to the, to the minus side of it. Okay, that's the minus. Uh, and whenever you pulse on that input channel, the counter increments or decrements. And all it has to do, the program has to do is just read the value in that counter and that's the delta V. So it's extremely simple. A corollary of that is that if it starts to receive a lot of pulses, it gets really, really busy incrementing the counter and uh, that's eventually what happened and caused the 1202 when one of the D2A went wrong and sent too many pulses, but that's for another video. So here we go. I can do more or less acceleration here. So by the time you have all the pulses, you end up with quite a few connections to the AGC. So those are, this is the input clock, the interrogator signal. And then you have a pair for each pulses and there is the plus and minus pulses for each of the three axes. So you end up with 14 connections to the AGC for the PIPA. However, it's super efficient because all the AGC has to do is basically count pulses. No, a surprising thing that I've been uh, battling is that uh, the uh, Arduino has a real hard time keeping up with the AGC. You would think that you no, know, it's running at 16 megahertz. It has plenty of time to treat those pulses, but the answer is that no. And that's the fastest way I could do this is interrupt driven. And I minimize the instructions, but just from it detecting this to where it uh, puts the pulse out, there is a three microsecond delay. And uh, so I'm, I'm fine on X, uh, I'm fine on Y, and then on Z it arrives too late. So I can only do two channels with an uh, Arduino. So this is really, uh, should be better done with an FPGA. And, and the reason is, is that the AGC is hardwired. That's what makes it so fast. And if you try to compute those things, uh, you, you just can't keep up with it, even uh, with a, a modern uh, microcontroller. Any game made for the computer? Yes! <laughs> Moon landing is called. Uh, uh, altitude rate. Oh, altitude rate has gone way up. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm, I'm coming.